the day has finally come. We are picking up our camper today. I am so excited. Pop up about used. The RV, a friend, he and his wife got divorced and I just took up the thing. So I didn't get an official Oh, it's dark in here. Hard to see. I'll film it later. It's too so I'll start here on the front. We'll work our way around the outside. Right. Get on the inside. So first thing is your tongue jack here. Turn it to the right. It's going to lift the tongue. Left's going to drop it. We'll latch it onto the ball. Got your safety chains and an emergency breakaway cable. If for some reason the trailer was to come loose from your vehicle, that would pull the pin, which will lock the brakes on the trailer. Then you have a size 24 interstate battery. The good thing about the interstate is they're nationwide, so you can get your warranty covered pretty much anywhere. And you do have a fuse in line on the positive side. Okay. That'll be how you disconnect the power. So you don't have to undo any of the battery just stuff, pull just the pull the fuse out. You have a couple of little things in there that'll stay on and draw a little bit of charge off the battery, so you want to disconnect that when you're storing it. Would, or I've got like a trickle charger I used to use for my motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Would it be better just hook that up all the time or disconnect it? I think it's best to disconnect it. Okay. Um, if you need to trickle charge it, you can do that and then disconnect it. All right. But maybe trickle charge it a few days before we're going out. If you have it... If you just leave the fuse in there, whenever this 7 volt <coughs> is plugged in, it'll charge the battery on the camper. And same with your 30 amp cord, it'll charge the battery as well. Okay. So pretty much you should be charging it all the time. And it should be full. Okay. Um, then you have a 20 pound propane tank. It holds about 4.7 gallons of propane. What is going on here? Do we just fill that with like propane from the grocery store or just what? exchange the tank. You, you can do that. I recommend getting it refilled rather than exchanging it. Cheaper? You'll get a little bit more propane for your money and it's also a brand new cylinder. No leaks or rust or anything so you'll want to stick with it. Oh, the lights are on. So, he turned it on. Oh. So basically, the ones like they sell at HEB, I can buy a second one, right? You could. Mm -hmm. You just have to get some way to mount it, which you could do easily. Uh, really what you'll do is get a different setup for your regulator and it'll have two pigtails so you can hook them both up. Or you can just have just, the extra one and, and then put just it on. move the hose. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So then you have your little light up here that'll help you when you're hooking up. Right. On all four corners you have stabilizing jacks. Oh. Casey taking good care of you guys out here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I'm taking everything you say so I don't forget. Like I said, they are just meant for stabilizing it. While you're inside walking around, it won't be moving around on you. Right. You'll want to pull the trailer up on some blocks or something if you need to to get it level and then put those down to the ground from there. That is a three quarter inch socket. If you want to put it on a drill, it makes it a lot easier. Okay. So then right here you have your ZAMP solar hookup. If you were to get one of those briefcase panels we have inside, it'd plug straight into there. And you have your outside shower. Your water pump's not on. So on your outside shower, you do have a cutoff on it, so you can keep your hot water, the temperature of your water at the same, cut it off and so you're not wasting it. You only have a six gallon water heater, so you'll want to try to save it as much as possible. This guy will just wind up in here. I dislocated my shoulder yesterday. Oh man. And it doesn't feel good. Have you been to the doctor? No. 
I don't I don't do the doctor thing really. Does it Does it happen often or it just I uh play baseball uh, and doing a lot of head first sliding. Every now and then I'd get it in the wrong spot and it'd pop yep. out. So this is a 751 key. The thing about that key is everybody that has a camper uses that key on their storages. So you'll have a storage, I believe, on the front over there or on the back. So anyone can get into our thing? And you can get into theirs. Why do they do that? I don't like that. Uh, you can get them switched out. There we go. Didn't have the key all the way in. <laughs> so this is where your sink is going to drain out and also your shower water so you'll be able to just take this cap off and with your camper today you'll get a starter kit which will come with a little 90 that screws on here just the same and it'll have a 90 with a garden hose hook up to it so you can just hook the hose up and run it away from the camper so you're not making a muddy mess right here or using a bucket this is gonna be your furnace, and that will get very hot if you have it on and running. Just be careful what you put out here next to the camper, if you're sitting anything next to it, if it can uh, catch fire, probably not a good idea. But the camper won't catch fire? No. Okay. Um, so this is the back of your refrigerator. You don't really ever have to get in here for anything. I just have it all opened up to kind of show you what's going on. This is gonna be your 120 plug for it. All your adjustments will be on the front of the fridge. If this plug's ever not working, you have a reset plug inside. Push that reset button just like at home. You'll reset that plug and it'll reset this one. Then when you light it on propane, you'll be able to check right down in there and see your flame. This fan is on a switch. It's thermostat controlled, so when you flip it on, it may not come on immediately. The fan, you mean? Yeah. But once the fridge gets hot, then it'll kick on. To bend it? Mm -hmm. So, do you, how do you light the? You just push a button. Push a button and it's PZO electric or yeah. something like that? Okay. Well, it runs off propane when you light the pilot. But it's just a switch on the inside. You'll switch it over to gas. It'll light itself. But did you say you're supposed to check to make sure it lights, or? No, I was just showing you where you could if you needed could. to. Could okay. So your tires are at 50 psi. That's going to be the max for them. And your lug nuts are torqued down to 100 pounds per square foot. Same with your spare tire back here. It's also at 50. This is where your cable hookup is. If you're at the RV park, you can hook the cable up. You have a spot inside right here next to it that you can hook up if you have a TV. Then you got your 30 amp cord here. Okay. And I'll show y'all how to put that away whenever we close it all up. But basically you'll just push it all in and keep running it in until it's all the way in. This is where your fresh water holding tank is. So if you're gonna be going dry camping and you need to take water with you, uh, you'll be able to fill this up, which will fill the tank on board. Stick your hose in there and turn the water on. Once it starts overflowing back out of here, that's how you know it's full. Anytime you're using your onboard tank, that's when you'll use your water pump, which is what we're doing right now. If you're hooked up to the city water connection here, you don't need the water pump at all. It's already pressurized. So, I don't know if he has a kit in here. water connection every time you hook a hose up to the camper make sure that this is on and I usually recommend to people to do it on the source end so like at the faucet mm-hmm if you're at your house yeah do it on, on the house side right here 
and then run this one to the camper. That way it regulates pressure in the hose and the camper, where if you did on this end, it would only be the camper. The camper. And that goes with the camper today? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then this is that 90 I was telling you about. You hook a hose up to it. To drain? Yeah. Free water? Oh, over there. Okay. And then this is going to be your 30 amp adapter to 120. So you can plug it in at your house at home. Basically, the reason we give you this is to get your fridge cold before you go on a trip. That way you don't have to use as much propane while you're driving. So then this is the back of your water heater right here. And it holds six gallons of water. If you're going to be going dry camping and you want to take as much water with you as you can, fill this up before you go. That way you have that extra six gallons of water. Um, but whenever you drain it out, which I recommend draining it out anytime you're not going to be using it. If it's three days or longer or something like that, then I'll just go ahead and drain it. Uh, but you have an anode rod drain plug right there, and that collects all the mineral deposits and everything in the tank. Pull that out, it's about this long, mm -hmm. and it starts out about that big around. Ghost. Uh, and it gets worn out to just being a little tiny rod, so you'll want to keep an eye on it. When you empty it out, I just set that anode right across the bottom there. That way you check it all the time. You just put it back in when you're going to use it. I have no clue what he's talking about. Do you understand yeah, what understand. he's saying? Yeah. Okay. So where do we fill that thing up at? You just turn the pump on or hook up to city water and it'll fill it. Yeah, it'll fill it. Oh, well, as long as you know. I've never had a camper, so I don't know anything. So before you pull that plug off, you want to make sure you release the pressure. Otherwise, when you pull that plug, it'll release it on you. Gotcha. Give you a shower. Make sure it's had a chance to cool down. And so if we're not using it now, do we keep it pulled like that? Or do we push it back in? No, it's, it's already oh, in. Okay. Otherwise, water come out. So bug screens. I recommend getting bug screens for your fridge, for your furnace, and for the water heater. That'd be a total of five Where do bug they go? screens. You put them over each of the openings. On here and on here. Cover them up. Do you uh, guys have those here? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, mud daubers are attracted to the propane, so they'll try to get in there and make nests in your okay. appliances. And if they do that, it's going to be like two or three hundred bucks to get that all cleaned out. So it's best to just go ahead and put the twenty, thirty dollar okay. covers on there. They mount on the outside or the inside? Mm -hmm. On the outside, they just spring on. They stay there all the time and they hold up, but they just spring on. So then we'll hook your license plate up there. Spare tires at fifty. You got your stabilizing jacks. Cool cat. That's your AC. Mm -hmm. And you got 120 volt plugs there. These plugs are only gonna work if you plug them with the 30 amp cord. Uh, the battery on the camper alone is not enough. So the when you're on battery power alone, none of the ACs are no. just, nope. just the 12 volt lights. Right. So you won't be able to use your AC or any of your plugs. Gotcha. And you have your little porch light here. On your step, you just lift up on it, push it in, and that's where it'll stay. You have a little footlight there. You can flip that on if it's dark, and you can get to the other lights with a little bit of light. So then, on your door here, you have a deadbolt lock from the inside. That way, you can lock it. And then, this is your handle lock, and this is your deadbolt lock. They use the same key. This one is a master tech key, so if you lock that and dropped it off for service, I could still get in that. If you lock that one, you have to leave us a key. We don't have a key for that. So other campers, they won't be able to use their keys to get in here, right? No, not that one. Okay. Uh, so then this is your toilet. And you'll use this whenever you fill it. Take this. Off. Slide that in. Then you can see your water level here, and he's got it filled up all the way, so it's all the way up to the top. I don't get it. We fill it up with water to mm -hmm. use the toilet. 
And there's no way to fill it other than this. And then when you go to the bathroom, if this is full of water, how is it going to... No, you flush, this is what you flush it with, right? Oh. Uh, you'll have a button inside, and yeah, you'll use this water when you flush it. Oh, okay. flush it. oh I see. Oh, I thought you just went in there and it emptied in here and you had to empty this out. Okay, hello. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think we do have to empty that. But we have to fill it with water. So you can flush it. So you can flush it. But there's still room in there for you to go to the bathroom even though it's full of water? It's a different, different uh, tank. Oh, I see. Oh. So whenever you pull this out, you got a little lever there on the bottom. The whole thing will slide out. You got little wheels on the back. And this handle extends. So you can pull it to dump it. I'm going to hear that sit case you there. Right there. The rest is going to be on the ends. It dumps out of here? Yes. You'll just pull that open and take your cap off here. Nope. Just kidding. And you just turn it upside down, I guess, and let it come out there? Yep. But we have to put some kind of special blue stuff or whatever in there, right? And that uh, honestly, I don't know if people put blue stuff in there or not, but I reckon you should. Is there supposed to be a, a cap on this? No. No? Okay. Oh. But it's threaded so you could use a hose. You could hook some sort of a hose to it. I'll have I to guess. ask. I, I don't want to lie to you. Yeah. It's got threads for something. I don't really <laughs> like that toilet so much. Yeah, I don't think it's just for... Emergency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to like be it. able to use it at night. I'm turning off these lights so they don't burn out the battery it's before hooked, we get in. It's hooked, hooked up the AC right now, I think. Okay. That's plugged in so it's charging. Uh, then you have a hold back for the door there, slide it in the hole there, and that'll keep it open when the wind's blowing. Keep it open. Yeah, the door. But why do you want to keep the door open? If you want to. Oh, because it'll just get full of bugs. Yeah. I don't want a bunch of bugs coming inside the camper. Okay. Are we going inside now? Mm -hmm. Oh, here we go. Sweet. So like I said, the first thing you'll do is flip that light on. That'll make it easier to see to get to these other lights. You'll flip them on just with the little switch there. You have your fire extinguisher here. This is where your table rests when it's closed up. Where's the table? I mean your wall rests. Wall? Yeah. When it folds down? Oh, okay. I see. Uh, a lot of the other ones don't have that and they have a big rest spot. Okay. So then you just have some storage yeah. there. You can also get to it from here if you want to. Then this is going to be your reset for all the plugs. So it's got that button on it. Just reset it if you need to, if the plugs aren't working. You got your storage drawer here and your owner's manuals. So the owner's manuals are really just for all your appliances, what the camper is made out of. So it's not like going to tell you how to use the camper. Or right. tell you how to use the appliances. And then to make your bed, just slide this guy out. Obviously that one will go the other way, but right. yeah, that's how you get the idea. I see that curtain thing back there. Does that pull up to cover these cur this window mm -hmm. when you're sleeping? That's going to be your nightshade. Oh. So it'll okay, block all the cool. sun out. I was thinking that canvas thing down there. So it has a, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. All right. 
and then you'll hook this guy on so that that doesn't slide around. Okay. So your 30 amp cord comes in right here. Okay. And if you're ever having trouble getting it out because it's all tangled up, you can get in there and pull it out and make it easier. Then you got your furnace switch right here. You got a little switch on top and then your adjustment on the bottom for the temperature. So it'll light itself and everything. Just turn it on and pick a temperature and it'll go start feeling it warm here in a second. And it runs on propane. Mm -hmm. Not electric. Not electric. A little bit of storage space in there. Be careful what you put in there. This guy will get kind of warm and everything, so you'll want to leave a little bit of room for it to breathe. Then you got your converter here. And all your breakers right over here. And all your fuses on this side. Next to each fuse, you have a little red LED light. If that light's on, you know you have a bad fuse. Gotcha. Get your replacement. That's cool. Yeah. That light's so bright I can't see. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so yeah, get, they have an assortment pack at AutoZone or wherever with the fuses so you can have them with you in case anything happens. And then if your breakers are ever tripped, just shut them off and all the way back on and that'll reset them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Want to make sure it's working. Yeah, it's working. So then you have your AC control right here. The only button you're going to push other than the plus and minus is this mode button. That'll run through all your different settings. So the first one's going to be your fan. And I usually just leave it on auto. Next is cool. So that's going to be kicking your AC on. Now that heater even smells hot. Does that smell go away? Or is uh, it just that it's brand new? Well, that and basically every time oh, winter comes around there's again. The air Holy night, that thing is really blowing some cold air. Wow. Yeah, it'll freeze it up in here. It's, yeah, it works. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. So turn it off then? You said just that's the temperature, right? You want Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You'll uh, select your temperature, obviously it has to be lower than the outside temperature for it to kick on. You don't have a furnace, but you do have a heat pump. Well, your furnace is over here, but it's not on here. So now it'll kick it over and start doing a little bit of heat. If it's not freezing outside, this will be enough to keep you warm. If it is freezing, you'll have to use the furnace over here. And just push it again, it goes down to there, and that's turning it off. Then you have your TV hookups here, cable, and 12 volt. So you can hook the TV up. This is going to be your propane and carbon monoxide detector. This is going to be the green light that stays on uh, if you don't pull that fuse. And that'll eventually kill your battery, but it'll take a little while. So this thing's real sensitive, and if you spray uh, cleaners next to it, then it'll set it off. It has a reset button on it that'll shut it up and just open doors and windows, let it air out, it'll reset itself and it should be fine. So it makes audible noise if it detects carb yeah. carbon monoxide? Yeah, it'll make an alarm noise if it smells that, but this little green light's always on because it's directly connected to the battery, and if it's right. just chirping at you, it's like, you know, the battery on the camper is getting low. Okay. So then you have your fridge here. All the controls on the front, it is a three-way, so you can run it on the battery. If you uh, get it cold before you go on a trip, the battery is just gonna maintain the temperature that the fridge is already at. So you'll wanna get it cold and then you can run it on battery rather than running it on propane, wasting propane. So this first button here is gonna be your on-off switch. Just push it in to turn it on. Then you have auto, gas, and DC. So auto is going to pick AC first and that's going to be the best source for it. 
if someone was to unplug the camper for some reason, it would automatically switch over to gas from there. If you're out of gas, it would automatically get to the battery. So to take it off and switch it to gas, you push the auto button, that'll switch it over to gas. And then if you want to do DC, just push the other button and it'll switch it to DC. But to turn it off all the way, like when we just have it stored in the garage and we're not camping, um, how do we make sure everything's turned off and not pulling from the battery while it's just sitting there doing nothing? Just push the auto. Okay. Button. Then you have your cold adjustment over here. One's going to be the least cold, five's going to be the coldest. Gotcha. You push up on this guy when you want to open the door. It's already cold. So then you got your stove here. And to light it, turn these over to light. You'll be able to hear the gas start flowing. Don't have to buy ourselves some of those long yeah lighter otherwise you'll be losing finger hair <laughs> <laughs> and this is propane mm -hmm. okay and that's it whenever you travel you'll close it down Very good all right so then your microwave there typical microwave i'm sure you know how to work that for your door maybe I didn't uh, get your camper ready it was supposed to be another guy that did this with y'all today so I'm kind of finding stuff out as we go as well that's for the stabilizer right and it like I said it's a three-quarter inch socket if you want to get a drill and do it this is also a GFI outlet with the reset button on it so you'll push that if your plugs aren't working then you have your water pump, and like I said, you only use your water pump if you're using your onboard storage tank. If you're hooked up to city water, you don't need the water pump on. Then you have your reefer vent. Like I said, that's only going to kick on when it needs to, so you can flip the switch and it may not kick on immediately. What, what vent? Reef? Yeah, your refrigerator. Refrigerator. Oh, I thought you said reefer. <laughs> I did say reefer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's just what we call it. I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, so then you have your water heater switch here flip it on this light will come on when it tries to light that light will turn off If it does light it'll stay off if it doesn't it'll come back on That's hot water here. Yes So it tried to light if it doesn't light it comes back on. Yep. I hear it burning. Then you got your sink here and it is adjustable you can use it how you need to it's an on-demand water pump so when you turn the water on uh, you'll hear that vibrating noise come on when you shut it off it should shut off as well if you ever have it coming on for no reason when you're not trying to get water then you might have a leak somewhere or you just need to make a tighten on the bottom of your sink here you'll have a couple of twist tight connections and those can tend to come loose as you're driving down the road so so, but the water pump, if you're not actually using water at the time, you can flip the switch off or it should be, but it doesn't draw any power unless you it right. pumps on. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. So that'll be your curtain and everything for this. that okay. so then you got your shower here and we're still using the water pump it's got a cut off on it just like the outside one so you can save your hot water right there. A little drain plug at the bottom and then your toilet oh there's a cap all right and then you do have some black tank fluid there. Whenever you want to flush the toilet. Mm. 
may not be water in there. No, it's full of water. Oh, is it? Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. We'll make sure it's, that works. Oh, yeah. It's frustrating when you do someone else's camper and you don't have it up to par. So the blue button will put your water in there and then you'll use that white handle and flush it. Where's our table? They told us when we looked at it that um, the table in here was no good and that they were going to give us a new table when we came to pick up the camper. <laughs> well, I'm sure we'll get you a table. Okay, and what's this doohickey? That is your fantastic fan. And it can either blow air out or pull air in, depending on which direction you select. And in the middle is off. Then you have your speed selection here. So select a direction, select a speed. You'll have to unlock it whenever you're not traveling. You want to open up the top. And then it'll turn on and off as you open and close it. So that's like keeps it cool in here. So that's pulling air out. So now it's going to blow. Like the ceiling fan. And that's it. You shut it down and it'll turn on. And then you'll lock it. And then these windows open and slide and then you can pull these down if you need to. And they all have screens, right? Yep. Does this open or no? Uh, no. Okay. And then you can just, what, okay, you can pull all of these down. down. Okay. They'll snap on the buttons. Okay. And then you have your fire alarm there, nine volt battery. And after we get the table and the shower curtain fixed, you'll show us how to close this thing mm -hmm. and open it. Okay. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Is this something that we put on or stays on? No, it should stay on. So like a weather stripping? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Like a blemish, a ding. So we got our weather stripping, and that thing, Dwight, that this, what you know, what that was for? Yeah, this is for raising and lowering the stabilizer jacks. Okay. We better let's store some of this stuff. He'll take care of it when he's Before we finished. hook up and... Well, no. Not to... I guess it would be better just to put it in here. This thing. And you know what this was for. License. What's this? Yeah, I'll put that on. That's for the leg and okay. the wall. Oh, okay. He said he was going to fix that, get a new snap board or something. Okay. You see anything else? No, I think. Okay. That's it. We'll certainly find out if it leaks. way to raise and lower it. <laughs> Yeah, let me find out about your table and get that fixed and then we'll close it all up. And then this guy will just slide. Okay, so right for shutting top. down, we pulled off the shower thing. It was right here. Now this glazed down. down, Linda. Got it. Alright. And the table. 
stores back here. So everything that's higher than this silver has to be put down. Okay, lay down, lay down. Looks like everything is shut. This is shut. Okay. Turn off the electricity. Turn off. Okay, how did you do that? Just okay, a switch on the this. light. And then this. Okay. And then you want to do it? Yeah, show me what to do. You have to pull. Well, we're going to start with the overhanger or the this part. You'll pop these two loose. Pull it down. Just pop that uh, handle loose. Up. Push it up. Push it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's pushed up. And then you'll take your side this side pieces is pushed up. and set it down. How do I do it? Just pull it? Yeah. Oh, standing. Then you'll grab your black handle there and pull that wall in. Pull the wall in. Hello. Then you have latches on the front there to keep that closed. Say what? On the outside, you have two latches to on the keep outside. that. Oh, on the closed. outside, okay. All right. So then I'll get out of your way. I'll stand back as well. You better tell me what to do. Start on this one. Because if you think about it, this wall, you'll do both of those and then you'll lay it down so you won't be able to get back to that. So you'll start with that so one. So push it up or down? Push it down. Down? Oh, well, no, push, push it up. Well, push up on okay. the handle and put it down. Push up on the handle. And then you'll go clockwise. Push up on the handle. Oh, God. It's not going to land on my head, though, right? Okay. Well, go ahead. Now, now what? And then this one. And now this And that wall's going to come loose, so be ready to bolt it. Hold this? No, the or wall. This. The yeah. wall. Hold the wall. And pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. Wow. Oh my god. Oh, where do I go? Right here? Mm-hmm. That goes. And that goes right there. Right there. Yep. Okay. Then you got your last one on this side. Show what this looks like, you want. This is when the birds start flying in our camper. And pull, okay, now this one? Mm-hmm. Good lord. Okay. Now so right. she loosened this one first and then did those clockwise. Left, mm -hmm. left back, right back, left front. Right front door. And then okay. down. So now I step out. Before you do this wall, you'll have to pop the door loose. Are you are you videotaping that? Pop the door loose. Got and it. And then the door has to miss this part, so you'll kind of close it. Am I still it. supposed to be in here? Yes. Oh, good lord. So it's you'll kind of close it, and then as you're setting the wall down, you'll step out this part. Huh? Let pull the wall down. Pull it down where? This wall. It's where? gonna it's gonna fold in this How way. How do I pull it down? With what? Grab this edge. Ay, yikes. Really? Grab this edge right here. Oh Lord. Okay. And look, and then you make sure the door misses that. And step out okay. it as you and set step it down. Step out as I set it down. There you go. Oh God. Okay. Very gently. I don't want to break these windows. Oh, and then I step out. Step out. Oh, that is so cool. The one guy made it look so darn easy. Okay. You're videotaping all this, right? Yep. All right. Gosh. Then this door will close. This door closes. It has to close before you put the top in. Okay. And then you grab that back piece and yank it. This thing? Yeah, pull down. Oh, God. Oh! <laughs> Simple. I just have to get used to it. Slaction these on the front. So you have to put this up for it to reach okay. all the way down. We'll have to get back in there, but you'll latch these down. You gotta go in there and turn your reefer off. What? I gotta go in there and turn the vent oh, off. Oh, we have to open it back up? Mm-hmm. Oh, shoot. It's okay. I just needed to make sure that you know how to close it. I can do it in Well, now we're gonna figure out how to open it, I guess. Right. Okay, so it was all closed down, right? 
I'm sure there's another side we have to unhook. I'm not gonna open it all the way though, unless you want me to. Now we'll figure that out. Do what you gotta do. Oh, he's just gonna crawl in there. And what got we do we forget to turn off? Uh the fridge is on. Do y'all want it on or off? Off. Off. Turn everything off. Yeah, we're uh It's gonna be parked the whole month of March. So is it best that we keep that refrigerator open then so it doesn't stink? No. Unless you have food in there, maybe. No. We're not gonna be camping the whole month, but we'll be good camping in April. Is this okay? It's just silicone. Okay. Caulking. Probably. Is it all caulked good and safe? Well, you're gonna have to read. You have to keep up with it. I mean, I'm sure you'll have to. How often should we recaulk everything so it doesn't leak? That's definitely gonna be one of the main things you want to keep an eye on is all your seals, and you want to check them at least three or four times. At throughout the year. Did you guys check all that before we're taking it home today mm -hmm. to make sure everything is all sealed? And if you see any holes or any raining. cracks or anything in the sealant, that's when you'll want to replace it. The worst thing for campers is water. Yep. Once that water starts getting in there, it really gets So, so this is the 30 amp cord and it just goes inside. But we can find online and everything we need. Everything you just went over, we can probably figure out by watching oh, yeah. again online, right? Probably. I, I don't. I pretty much understand everything he's done so far. Okay, good, because I don't. And I'd be in sorry shape while I was trying to go camping by myself. And everything is locked down? Yep. Do, I, do we bring the measuring tape to measure one more time? Nope. Um, did you, let me ask you a question. Did you measure from here? to yes. the end of the town or did you measure from the spare tire <laughs> oh no no i didn't it's measure. not gonna fit in our garage we can take that off hello hello so we are at the princess craft rv now since ours is already in the back and shut and hooked up to the car i'm going to show you one that's open but we just purchased an a-liner lxe ours is white this one's gray other than that everything's the same and this is what it looks like. We are so excited. We're going to start getting to go camping. And so, I can't show you the whole thing because I don't want to take things apart. But so, when you walk in, it's got the refrigerator and freezer, stove, microwave, sink, storage, storage. These little benches lift up with storage underneath. The couch pulls out into a full-size bed. And these things open up for storage here and there, storage down there. And there is a table that's already stored that goes in between these two here. This window, um, in hours, it has... Um, a liner, uh, like a Venetian blind type thing, whatever, that uh, closes that off. All of these windows open with screens, a uh, fan. It also has an air conditioner in it here, uh, windows here. This extra seating, but it's also a bathroom. So this lifts up and connects up here to give you, so you would have privacy but it has a toilet and a shower the shower curtain goes all the way around up here so you can stand up and have a shower um, sit down and go to the bathroom it flushes and it goes out underneath into a holding tank so um, this is it um, we are very excited it folds down so you let me see, you start, I think, here, you un you unlatch that, you unlatch that, you unlatch that, and then this whole wall comes down, unlatch this, this whole back wall comes down, 
and then the doors close in on it so yeah, I guess you would have to see it but then the whole thing collapses and it lies down flat so I'm extremely happy we are very excited and it fits with the spare tire and all into our garage once it's all folded down. A-Liner LXE at Princess Craft. And we just got done signing all the paperwork. It's hooked up to the car now and we're about to leave. So congratulations to us. Thank you, God. And we're very excited. And look at this little guy. He's ready to go camping. Hello. <laughs> Sweet little thing. <laughs> anyway, okay. Say goodbye. Goodbye. So we're hooked up. There she is, folded down. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. So the trailer basically plugs into it on this end, and then that end plugs into the vehicle. So it just kind of passes through the brake control module now so all the lights everything else just kind of flows straight through it mm -hmm. um, and then that does everything that that module would have done inside the vehicle so you have the jack whenever you're going to crank it down um, you can you're going to pull the wheel off whenever it's up so when you go to put take it off just put the wheel back on there's a pin that holds the wheel on there so i'll show you that when we get it off but you just lift it up put some weight on it and then this little latch you're going to pick it up and then slide the whole thing back as well and then that'll release it from the ball. So then you just crank it up high enough to clear the ball. Gotcha. And then you just have the two safety chains on here, so one on each side. Um, I always kind of hook them in through the back like that, just in case this clip ever fails or for any reason, if it's sitting this way, if you hit a bump or something, it's likely to pop out. So I always just kind of clip it from the back. It's kind of a secondary feature, safety thing. Okay. Um, then you also have the two safety chains. You'll have one on each side. So I always try to pull kind of cross them. So whichever one's on this side, hook it up onto the right, you got it. Um, that way it just kind of, if it ever does pop off of the ball for any reason, at least the chains will kind of help hang it a little bit. Slow so it's it not, down a bit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so then your seven way cord, um, it's only going to go in one direction. So you have this notch right here with this lip on the back end that's going right. to go towards the lid so on yours it's sideways so then it's just going to go straight in the side right here and then if it's not in all the way you'll see the lids still kind of popped out once it's in all the way the lid will kick down behind it gotcha and there's another tab on the lid that'll lock it in there so it's not likely to pop out and um, then you just lower it down on the ball And then just slide that forward sometimes it rolls a little bit because it's because of how light it is so you can push on the trailer push on the vehicle whichever you prefer um, and then if you have any locks or anything like that you can slide it through this little hole right here and it'll lock that coupler down on the ball and we just bought the lock right right yeah. awesome um, then you'll have a third one or a second one that'll basically just replace this pin you would take that pin out and put another locking one in there right and then you have the other lock the bigger one would basically if you had it off of the vehicle it would act as the ball and it right. would go up inside the coupler right. slide it up against it and lock it down so that way people can't hook up to it and take it away and um, then you just take this pin out and then I just roll it up the rest of the way and why do you want the wheel to come off because it, where it's going to sit. Oh, for where you're, when you tow it, you take the wheel off? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because otherwise, right there. Let's see. You could hit so yeah, it'd be a little bit farther down than that. So that's not really a whole lot of ground clearance okay. if you go into a driveway at a gas station okay. or something like that. So just take it off and I always keep the pin with the wheel. Um, for two reasons. One, you won't lose it. And two, they get kind of dirty and nasty and it kind of gives you a little handle to hold it with. So then just make sure that's up high enough to clear everything and you are all good on that end. Um, did you want to keep this in the vehicle or? Yeah, we I wish I had a plastic perfect. bag for it. But yeah, it's good enough, babe. Oh, look at the car dirty. Okay, put it in that plastic bag. Okay. Perfect. Oh, how cute it is. Looks right behind the Jeep. 
They are a nice car. Y'all ready for the picture? Yep. I guess so. Is that everything? So. Do we have any other questions? Uh, I'll go over the brake controller with y'all if y'all want to do the picture real quick since okay. I guess they're waiting. So did you think it did you think it was gonna fit? I with knew this, it would with fit. With the spare tire? I told you, baby, I measured it. With the spare tire. <laughs> but I knew we but, had we had the little recess, see? We got <laughs> three or four inches to spare. Three or four inches to spare. But we got plenty of room on each side to walk through. Kind of have to turn sideways here at the end. But we've got all this room at the end, a good, you know, three feet, one foot. <laughs> but we got plenty of room on both sides. Yes. And we're home safe. It's in the garage and life is good. Love you, babe. Love you too.